in the digestive glands, the third one is the liver, the human liver. Human liver is the largest salivary gland, sorry. Human liver is the largest gland in our body. Human liver is the largest gland in our body. After skin, this is the second largest organ. It is the heaviest internal organ in body. It's roughly around one and a half kg. In female, it is around 1200 to 1400 grams. In males, it is around 1400 to 1500 grams. So it's slightly bigger in case of human liver is slightly bigger in case of males when compared to females. Even lengthwise also, in female it is around 7.5 cm. In male it is around 10, 10.5 cm. So it is slightly bigger and heavier in case of males when compared to females. It is the largest gland in our body. After skin, it is the second largest organ. And it is the heaviest organ in our body. Now, the color is reddish brown in color. The color of human liver is reddish brown. It is present in the right upper quadrant of abdomen. See, this is the abdomen region. This is thorax, this is the abdomen. Hmm? So that's the muscular partition. That's where you will see the diaphragm. So this is thorax, this is abdomen. So this is the upper lower abdomen. Upper abdomen, left side. Upper left quadrant of abdomen, you can see. Sorry. If this is the abdomen. The location of the liver. Liver is located in the right upper quadrant of abdomen. Liver is present in the right upper quadrant of abdomen. It is reddish brown in color. And if you see from the from the ventral view, from the ventral view, you will see two loops, the left loop, the right loop, the left and right. The left lobe is smaller when compared to the right loop. And in between the two there is falcip falciparum ligament. It is called falciform ligament. There is a ligament like structure which connects, it is a structural demarcation between the left and right lobes, between the left lobe and right lobe, structural anatomical differentiation between the two lobes is by falciform ligament. It's a ligament which connects at the junction of the two lobes with the anterior abdominal wall. But when you see from the inferior side of liver, hmm, liver, liver, inferior view, you will find two more lobes. This is the left and this is the right lobe. As usual, you will see that two lobes. But we will also find quadrate loop and caudate loop. Quadrangular is quadrangular in shape. That's why it's called quadrat, quadrate loop caudate towards the tail, it is present towards the back, that's why it's called caudate loop. So there are actually four lobes, but only two lobes are visible from the ventral view. Inferiorly, two, two more smaller lobes are actually present. Now if I take a cross section of liver, if I take one lobe and take cross section, I will find smaller lobules, they are called liver lobules. Here I drew one liver lobule. Around 50,000 to 1 lakh liver lobules are present. Around 50,000 to 1 lakh liver lobules are present inside the liver. 
Now, each each of the lobule is hexagonal. It's like honeycomb and it is hexagonal in shape. Such lobules are around 50,000 to 1 lakh lobules are present inside liver. Each of this lobule is covered by a glissens capsule. A connective tissue membrane which, which covers a connective tissue membrane which covers that hepatic lobule is called glissens capsule named after Francis, Francis Glisson. <coughs> liver lobules are structural and functional units of liver. Now, in between the glissens capsule and that hexagonal unit, you can see the portal triad. So, this is the portal triad. So, I, I, I drew several portal triads here. For convenience, I drew it bigger. Actually, they are little small. So, one portal triad is here. It includes a bile artery. It includes it includes a portal triad. I took a portal triad. It includes a hepatic artery. It also includes hepatic portal vein. Nen katta ina parle do. Idi idi kawrai the sir kote. O kung sir katta hoto. A portal triad includes hepatic artery, hepatic portal vein, and also includes a bile duct. So there are three things which are present in each of that portal triad. Now, if you observe inside, inside. You will see several hepatic cords. A single row of hepatocytes is called hepatic cord. Liver cells, hepatic means liver. Cells present in liver is called, they are called as hepatic cords. So here I drew one hepatic cord here. So th these are hepatocytes. Hepatocyte means liver cell. Actually, I drew it round, but actually they are actually cuboidal. So if you see that cells, they are cube-like. Each hepatocyte is cube-like. They are around 20 to 30 microns. I mean one hepatocyte. They contain mitochondria, rough endoplasmic reticulum, ribosomes. Where there is more metabolic activity, there is more mitochondria and where there is more protein synthesis, there are more of ribosomes there. And it also contains smooth endoplasmic reticulum, something which is seen to a lesser extent in most of the cells in body. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum is abundantly present, indicating there is, there is lipid synthesis, there is glycogen synthesis. Glycogen lipid storage is there inside the hepatocyte. And if you observe the nucleus, you can see an isokaryosis. You can see increase in the size of nucleus, indicating in some cases there is tetraploidy, there is polyploidy conditions do exist. In some cases, there is the nucleus is also binucleate. The average lifespan of the liver cell is around five months, and they are effectively replaced. So this is one hepatic cord. This is another hepatic cord. So this is one hepatic card. This is one hepatic card. This is another hepatic card. A, a double row of hepatic cards is called as hepatic plate. Hepatic card, hepatic card. Double row of hepatic cards. In between there is a gap. So that is called as hepatic plate. Now, in between two hepatic plates, you can see an empty space. 
the hepatic plates in between the hepatic plates in between the hepatic plates you can see empty space this the space is, is called liver sinusoids this is liver sinusoid in between hepatic plates i mean hepatic cords of one hepatic plate this is one hepatic cord this is another hepatic cord in between you can see a small area where bile flows this is called as bile canaliculus so this is one row of hepatic cells one row of hepatic cells is called hepatic cord so we have got two rows of hepatic cells together it is called hepatic plate so in between the two hepatic cords of hepatic plate you will see a small bile canaliculus and in between two hepatic plates this is one hepatic plate this is another hepatic plate in between there is a gap the gap is filled with blood and that empty space are called as liver sinusoids now into this blood see if you see the direction of blood flow the direction of blood flow see hepatic artery hepatic portal vein two blood vessels are bringing in blood here these two the hepatic artery the hepatic portal vein they are bringing blood into sinusoids the hepatic artery hepatic artery is a branch of systemic arch it's a branch of systemic arch it is bringing oxygenated blood hepatic portal vein it starts from stomach intestine spleen pancreas huh? it is coming from stomach a part of that is coming from stomach as well spleen pancreas and majorityly from intestine hepatic portal vein it starts as capillaries ends as capillaries particularly from intestine it ends in liver it is bringing deoxygenated blood it is bringing deoxygenated blood but brings in nutrients so both these are entering into liver sinusoids from liver sinusoids blood will enter into central vein central vein is present at the center here this is the central vein location you can see these liver sinusoids are here these are sinusoids in between hepatic cords there are liver sinusoids and at the center there is central vein now blood flow we are discussing blood flow hepatic artery hepatic portal vein the blood is brought to liver sinusoids from liver sinusoids it will enter into central vein central vein is at the center of that hepatic lobule from central vein blood is taken out by hepatic vein hepatic vein becomes a branch of post cavel vein so this is taking out the deoxygenated blood the wastes coming from the blood collected from the liver or collected from central vein into hepatic vein and it becomes passed part of post cavel vein so that's how blood is removed now surrounding these liver sinusoids there are kaffir cells those cells are called as kaffir cells surrounding the liver sinusoids there are kaffir cells kaffir cells are nothing but mnps monocytes of blood when they go to other tissues they are called as mnps mononuclear phagocytes mononuclear phagocytes and they are capable of phagocytosis so they are present surrounding the liver sinusoids they are present they capable of phagocytosis 